Come on over to the bench, let me show you what we got going on here. Um, we're going to uh, use a relay to actually run the line lock. Um, the wire on the switch that Hurst has provided is awfully small gauge. I don't want to try to run all the voltage through that, um, especially since it's going to be running under the car. So what we're going to do is we're only going to use the switch as an activator for the relay, and then the relay is going to actually be what's powering the line lock. Um, so we've got the relay there. I've got some smaller gauge wire that I'm going to use. Uh, it's paired up wire. That is what's going to hook up to this switch to activate the relay. I've got my relay connector here. Um, I'll throw up a wiring diagram here for you. And you can look at that and that should give you an idea of what we're doing. All right. So other than the relay, we also have, uh, there was a fuse that was included with the unit uh, that will go from the battery to the relay um, inside the car and uh, I will have a second switch that will uh, energize or de-energize the system. Uh, I mean we're going to do that so we don't have any accidental application if we actually if we hit the button while we're shifting. Uh, and then Hurst has also included a little little red light here so when you do activate the line lock you know that you've got it activated. So we'll have all that wired up uh, in a little bit here but while the car is still up in the air we want to take this opportunity to go ahead and get that shift button wired up because we are going to wire run that wire under the car. Um, and where it goes up into the floor right around the shifting mechanism I've got some of this flexible uh, protective sleeve that we're going to run, actually run the wire through and that'll prevent any kind of abrasion or anything that could cause a problem. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll get this wire run, uh, put in place, and then uh, we'll just show you some, some pictures here of what it looks like. As you can see, I'm a total mess. It took us about a half hour to get the wire run uh, from the shifter around and up. Um, here it is here, we've got an extra long length. We still have a few more clips to put down to hold this in place, and then we'll get it routed up. We're gonna mount the uh, relay right next to this relay here. We're gonna make a little bracket here in a little bit. Um, over here, we ended up not not being able to use this piece of uh, protective sleeving, which I really wanted to use. It's pretty tough stuff. It was just a little too short for where we were going. Um, so what I ended up using is just some of this convoluted plastic tubing here. Um, I had a small piece. I was able to slip my wire up and through there, uh, but I wasn't crazy about having just one piece of this. Uh, plastic tubing. So what we did is I took a larger piece, um, slid the small one inside of that, we put a couple of uh, zip ties to hold it in place, and now I'm pretty satisfied that uh, when you move the shifter through its range of travel, there's no no place for it really to abrade, there's nothing for it to get caught on. Uh, we've got things wired down. Uh, I followed the reverse light wire actually in order to uh, have a good clean routing that's free of any obstructions. So that's what we ended up with.
Okay, so we've got the car pulled out of the garage here so we can get inside and do the wiring. Uh, before we jump inside, we'll show you what's going on uh, under the hood here. Um, you'll notice right here we've got a, uh, a new relay that's been installed. Uh, that is the relay now to activate the uh, line lock solenoid. Uh, the white wire here is our signal wire coming from the switch. Uh, that will activate the relay. It does jump over here for a ground. Um, everything else has been tucked, tucked away. Uh, we are drawing power to the relay directly from the battery just to ensure a good strong signal there. Um, but now let's hop inside the car here and we'll show you exactly what uh, what we did. All right, inside the car here, we'll show you what's going on. One of the things we really struggled with was trying to figure out where to place the switch and the indicator light. Um, if you refer back to the drawing, uh, I actually have a secondary switch uh, that will deactivate the whole system, and that's right here. Um, what we ended up doing was there's a, normally a trim panel that sits right here. Um, I didn't want to cut into the dashboard, so I removed this trim panel, bent up a piece of uh, piece of plastic here that acts as a switch plate. So now we actually have a an activation switch here. Nothing happens. Uh, until I actually turn this on and now when I activate the line lock I do have a light to tell me that it's activated. So for the button that goes onto the shifter um, this is the wire that was originally attached to it and we decided to remove this completely for two reasons. One, uh, I really don't like the red wire. I didn't want to see that as it followed the, the shifter handle down. And two, I didn't want to have to try to splice into this. I tried to uh, have as few splices as possible. So what we decided to do here was actually unsolder this wire from the switch itself and then just simply replaced it with the white wire completely. Once I get the switch put back together, we'll just get the shift ball reinstalled and We'll run a couple tests to make sure everything's actually working. And then it's time to road test. We have to double check, make sure the brakes are working. Um, and then the ultimate test, does the line lock work? All right, and our final step here now is to go ahead and get the switch put back together. Um, we do have the shift ball removed uh, just so we can do some tests to make sure we got the wire cut to the right length. Uh, it's a pretty simple switch. Uh, not a lot to, to worry about here. We'll just drop the trigger button back in place, lay the little circuit board in here. We're good to go there. It's got this little rubber tube that's used to Hold it onto the handle here. So we'll squeeze that together. And it really only has this one Phillips screw here holding this. Tighten that up. That's secure. And now with the switch all put back together, uh, there's really nothing left to do but to install it. So it just slides on over top of the shift handle here as far as routing this this wire uh, our plan here is just to run it right down the top of the handle here and I'm just going to take some white zip ties for the time being to tie this down
that looks pretty good for the moment. Uh, now I'm actually not too too crazy about how this looks. I do have some ideas on what we can do to, to clean it up. But we're not going to mess with that right now because frankly this is all about making some tire smoke. So we'll leave it as is and we'll come back later and, and do some visual cleanup. Final step now is to just go ahead and get the, get the shift ball reinstalled. So let's put the lock nut on here. Put the shift ball on there. Cinch that down. That is not going anywhere. Button is right in a reachable spot. If I put it up in the first gear, I'll be able to activate pretty comfortably. And now it's time to go see what happens. All right. Well, we're just going to Take this for a quick spin around the block first to make sure uh, we do actually, in fact, have the brake working right. And then I think we're going to go out and see if we can find ourselves a country road somewhere. And, uh, well, try not to get caught. 